Yes. Welcome. I am M.D. Lavell, and we, this is Moorish News, and we're going to be discussing today Moorish News, breaking news, news special edition. For all of you out there, the present Moroccan Empire speaks. Constitutional treaty law and how it applies to our remedy as Moorish Americans. We're also going to be talking about what is the present Moroccan Empire and who are the heirs. But before I go any further, let me give thanks to the great God, the Father of this universe. Let me give uh, thanks for uh, all of He has, all that the great God has done for us here today. I would love to introduce my guest today, uh, Grand Chief. Lionel Love, the Moorish Science Temple of America as a body politic. It's not going to American. Also, I have as my guest Sheik Jackson Bay. Islam, Sheik Jackson Bay. And I like to, <clears throat> and Islam to all of you out there. Islam, Hotel, Shalom, Peace, and Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome into the future of Moorish News. We're going to be discussing many, many topics. We have quite a few members that are inquisitive about what's going on here in the present Moroccan Empire. And they have questions. Questions like, what is the present Moroccan Empire and who are the heirs? Egypt, the capital empire of the dominion of Africa. What is that all about, Ham and Kush? So what we're going to do right now, we're going to go into the read of chapter 47, uh, Islam, I want to give thanks and salute all of the sisters out there because without the mothers, there wouldn't be any children and without the children, there is no nation. And let me give great Islam out there to all of our men that are standing up, the strong men and women. We know your struggle. We are your struggle and we're here for you. Islam to the nations of the earth, to all the brothers and sisters out there in the present Moroccan empire as I give Grand Sheik, uh, the uh, love and support as assistant grand sheik is, I recognize that our job is never done. Islam, Sheik Jackson Bay, can you give us chapter 47 of reading, um, the present Moroccan Empire, Egypt, the capital empire of the dominion of Africa? Thank you very much. Islam, yes ma'am. Uh, first I rise and give all perfect praise and honor to our Father God Allah. I would like to acknowledge all the divine prophets, namely Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, and the last and most illustrious prophet of these days and times, our most noble prophet, Drew Ali. I would like to acknowledge the Grand Sheik, Mr. Lionel Love Eel, and our assistant Grand Sheikas, uh, Love Eel, Islam. Islam. I'll be reading from the Moorish Holy Quran, Circle 7. Uh, these are the divine instructions from the Holy Prophet, noble Drew Ali, Islam. Chapter 47 reads, Egypt, the capital empire of the dominion of Africa, the inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. Old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his family were second. Then came the word Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line of the dominion of Amexum. The first true and divine name of Africa, the dividing of the land between the father and the son. The dominion of Cush, northeast and southeast Africa, and northwest and southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. In later years, many of their brethren from Asia and the Holy Lands joined them. The Moabites from the land of Moab who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit northwest Africa, they were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire. With their, with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourned from the land of Canaan seeking new homes. Their dominion and inhabitation extended from northeast and southwest Africa, across the great Atlantis, even unto the present North, South, and Central America, and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands before the great earthquake, which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. The river Nile was dredged and made by the ancient pharaohs of Egypt in order to trade with the surrounding kingdoms. Also, the Niger River was dredged by the great Pharaoh of Egypt in those ancient days for trade, and it extends eastward from the, from the River Nile, westward across the Great Atlantic, 
it was used for trade and transportation. According to all true and divine records of the human race, there is no Negro, black or colored race attached to the human family because all inhabitants of Africa were and are of the human race, descendants of the ancient Canaanite nation from the holy land of Canaan. What your ancient forefathers were, you are today without doubt or contradiction. There's no one who was able to change man from the descendant nature of his forefathers unless his power extends beyond the great universal creator Allah himself. These holy and divine laws are from the prophet, Noble Drew Ali, the founder of the anointing of the Moorish Science Temple of America. These laws are to be strictly preserved by the members of all temples of the Moorish Science Temple of America that they will learn to love that they will learn to open their meetings and guide and guide it according to the principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Every subordinate temple of the Grand Major Temple is to form under the covenant of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and create their own laws and customs in conjunction with the laws of the Holy Prophet and the Grand Temple. Islam, brother, you can stop right there. Thank you so very much, Sheik, for that reading. And what was the purpose of that reading was to express one thing, and that one thing is and was to know and understand that the present Moroccan Empire is present. So presently, we're talking about that present Moroccan Empire. So for the record, Grand Sheik, I want you to go into Ham Kush, the ancient pharaohs of Egypt. Could you go into that briefly, Grand Sheik, the ancient pharaohs of Egypt? Islam, I rise giving praise to Allah, the Lord, governor, cherisher, sustainer, ruler of the worlds. I give hell and high honors to all the true and divine prophets, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, Juali, and his forerunner, purity made manifest, Marcus Moses Garvey. Um, you can hold that right there, Grand Islam. Sheikh Brother. Can you draw off that more Science Temple of America, Divine Constitution and Bylaws, please? Islam, yes, ma'am. I'll be Islam. reading Act 6, and it reads as follows. With us, all members must proclaim their nationality, and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed, that they may know that they are part and partial of this set government, and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779, and it lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Drew Ali, the prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the, ancient Can of the ancient Moabites whom inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Islam. Islam. Okay, thank you very much for that reading, brother. I do know that um, that divine constitution and bylaws is a great document. And now, brother, uh, while they're working on things, um, I want to see if you can continue and read, since I see that you're still up front. Can you continue, brother, with the reading on the Peace and Friendship Treaty? Because let the spirit move and let it show that we are responsible for everything that we do, and none of us is going to get out of here without that being taken care of. Read that Peace and Friendship Treaty, and let's give praise to the great God, Allah, for the signs that the Prophet Noble Jew Ali talked about that's presently right now in Houston, Texas. Let us know that there are no accidents, coincidences, or mistakes. It is the great God, the Father of this universe that move everything forward. Let us read that Peace and Friendship Treaty, Brother uh, Jackson Bay. Yes, Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am, Grand Street, because I'll be reading uh, the Moroccan uh, Treaty of Peace and Friendship uh, and I'll be reading Articles 1, 2, 3, and also Article 14, Islam. Islam. To all persons to whom these presents <laughs> shall come or be made known, whereas the United States of America and Congress assembled by their commission, bearing date the 12th day of May, 1784, thought proper to constitute John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson, their ministers, plenipotentiary, giving to them or a majority of them full powers to confer, treat, and negotiate with the ambassador, minister, or commissioner of His Majesty the Emperor of Morocco concerning a treaty of amity and commerce, 
to make and receive propositions for such treaty and to conclude and sign the same, transmitting it to the United States and Congress assembled for their final ratification and by one other commission bearing date the 11th day of March, 1785, did further and power the said ministers plenipotentiary or a majority of them by writing under the hands and seals to appoint such agent in the said business as they might think proper with authority under the directions and instructions of said ministers to commence and prosecute the said negotiations and conferences for the said treaty provided that the said treaty should be signed by the said ministers. And whereas we, the said John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, two of the said ministers plenipotentiary, the said Benjamin Franklin being absent by writing under the hand and seal of the said John Adams at London, October the 5th, 1785, and of the said Thomas Jefferson at Paris, October the 11th of the same year, did appoint Thomas Barclay, agent in the business aforesaid, giving him the powers therein, which by the said second commission we were authorized to give. And the said Thomas Barclay, in pursuance thereof, have arranged articles for a treaty of amity and commerce between the United States of America and His, and His Majesty, the Emperor of Morocco, which articles written in the Arabic language conferred by his said majesty, the emperor of Morocco and sealed with his royal seal being translated into the language of the said United States of America. Together with the attestations thereto annexed are in the following words to wit. Article one, we declare that both parties have agreed that this treaty consisting of 25 articles mm -hmm. shall be inserted in this book and delivered to the honorable Thomas Barclay, the agent of the United States now at our court with whose approbation it has been made and who is duly authorized on their part to treat with us concerning all matters contained therein. Article two, if either of the parties shall be at war with any nation, whatever, the other party shall not take a commission from the enemy nor fight under their colors. Article three, if either of the parties shall be at war with any nation, whatever, and take a prize belonging to that nation and there shall be found on board subjects or effects. Islam. Okay, brother, after you continue that article, finish up that article, Grand Sheik, and we're gonna uh, expound on those articles. And I thank you very much, brother. Yes, ma'am. Belonging to, the, to either of the parties, the subjects shall be set at liberty and the effects returned to the owners. And if any goods belonging, and then article 14. Okay, brother. I want to say thank you so very much. And I need everyone to understand that because of these treaties, things have moved forward for us as a nation of people. I want you, Grand Sheik, to go into, now that we have read three of the greatest documents, we've read that Peace and Friendship Treaty. We have also read the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Chapter 47, uh, which is the capital, Egypt, the capital empire of the dominion of Africa. And we just finished reading uh, our divine constitution and bylaws. Now, this is a triple uh, powerful uh, vibration that has been set up and sent through the Holy Prophet by the great God, Allah. I want you to expound on Grand Sheik Ham, Kush, and the ancient pharaohs of Egypt and how they tie into all of that briefly, please. Islam, Islam, all praises due to Allah. The great pharaohs of Egypt, Ham and Cush, these are probably some of the characters that you will recognize in the Holy Bible, right? But these are actually historical figureheads that we can reference in history. So when the Prophet Noble Drali spoke about the Constitution being one of the greatest documents of all time, what he was keying us towards is the fact that we are what our forefathers were without doubt or contradiction. So we are Ham, we are Cush. Islam, we are, we are Ham, we are Kush. What about the Prophet Noble Jaw Ali, his purpose and role as a head of state grand sheikh? Can you expound on that, please? Well, the fact of the matter is the Prophet Noble Jaw Ali recognized that he was indigenous to the land and he had a connection to the land. The nationality is dealing with the land. So his job and his role was to teach us the truth about our nationality and birthrights so that we could be on equal footing with all the other nations of the earth because 
we had been the footstool for far too Absolutely. long. Absolutely. Grant, she kind of about that earthly and divine salvation, that earthly and divine salvation of the Moors as it relates to the vast estate. Can you expound on that, brother? Well, the present Moroccan Empire is the earthly part of our salvation. We have the earthly salvation and we also have the soul plane. You know, our estate extends beyond the physical. So let us be clear about that. When we read chapter one, the creation and the fall of man within the circle seven, Koran, Holy Koran, we draw that our vast estate and our heritage extends beyond just the plane of things made manifest, but also to the plane of soul and the plane of spirit. Islam, Islam. Uh, Islam. I also would like for you to expound on that, Sheikh Jackson Bay, um, as it relates to us, that earthly and divine salvation of the Moors as it relates to our vast estate, Islam. Islam, uh, briefly, our vast estate is something that has been withheld from us and uh, held obscure and held back from the Moors. This is why Allah had to send the prophet for us so-called, the fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nation, the so-called Negro, black, and colored to proclaim our nationality so that we can have uh, a connection in real time to the vast estate, which is the land and all of the resources therein. Islam? Islam, reading comprehension, civics, constitution, and how it relates to all, to the law and all the Moors. We're gonna be going into that. Um, a, we want to talk about a peace and friendship treaty, Grand Sheik, between Morocco and the United States, because that's that's a treaty that has been um, uh, that has been on the books for a very long time. But we want to get a little bit deeper into that as far as which has more authority. But before we go into that, we want to talk about that evolution of the Moorish Science Temple of America from a non-for-profit to, what was that? Uh, For-profit, body, body politic, body actually. Politics. Because there was a transition that was made, and a lot of us missed it. A lot of the Moors missed that transition that was made between that non-for-profit and that body politic. And, and sisters and brothers, let me explain this to you. This is what has us, this right here, that right there have us at war with one another. They thought it would separate us and break us down. But going to that smooth transition that the prophet uh, created, you understand how he stole us while the watchdog slept, Grand Sheik, please? Can you expound on that, that move? Well, Islam, um, we just want to be clear that the, the Peace and Friendship Treaty, the Constitution, first of all, recognizes the fact that the Supreme Treaty should be the supreme law of the land. So when you go into Article 6 of the United States Constitution, it speaks about treaties being the supreme law of the land, which the first was the peace and friendship treaty between the U.S. and Morocco. So understanding that the United States Corporation got its start first from Morocco, the, the present Moroccan Empire. They as couldn't it is. come over here so without getting the So you have, the, you right? have, the, you have the, Mor the kingdom of Morocco. Let us be clear. So we we're not misunderstand. Okay. A kingdom is different from an empire. An empire is composed of several different kingdoms, whereas a kingdom is just a kingdom. An okay. empire is composed of so several So we have the kingdom, kingdom so. we have the empire. Now let's talk about that evolution from that non for profit because this is what, where that power came in. And I want you to talk well, about prophet, why the no prophet, excuse me, I want you to talk about why the prophet went from a non-for-profit to a for-profit, because you need to understand, brothers and sisters, it was the reason I, Holy and Divine Prophet, went there. Grand Sheik expound on that, and then uh, Sheik, I want you to expound on it. Islam. Sheik uh, Islam. Jackson Islam. Bay. Islam. So Please. understanding that the prophet knew that he had to get out people from a dead state of mind, a mentally enslaved state of mind. So he had to bring it from the state because the state was operating as a slave master, and he had to bring it over to the realm of freedom. So religious freedom, as is stated within the Constitution First Amendment, okay? So it transitioned from a corporate civic entity that's under the jurisdiction of the state solely to a sovereign autonomous organization that's religious in nature and that, has, that can move much like you see the Vatican. Islam, now that's the power, see, that's my next thing. So Add the power that came from it. Uh, the power that was with the temple as far as the, well, the power to issue and charters. And then 
the force that came with it when it became a body politic. Can you expound on that briefly, Grand mm -hmm. Sheik? Thank you very much. Okay, the power that comes from with the religious body politic is that it no, has no, the power. No, no, the non for profit charges. first. Let's talk about that non for profit because he, it was a reason Prophet Noble Joe Ali made that switch. See, he has a certain amount of power he was operating in that non for profit jurisdiction. Well, the, more the, the, the present Moroccan Empire can't be sovereign under an entity that originally gave it a permission to operate in the Islam, Grand Sheik. That makes a lot of sense. And what that brings us to is which has the more authority, the divine constitution and bylaws of the Moorish Science Temple of America? or the United States of America, which has of America. more authority. Well, the, the constitution of those that are indigenous, the Moors, those who gave permission and recognition to the corporation, the laws that come from us would be those superior laws. So that would be the, the con divine constitution and bylaws for the Moorish Science Temple of America. Well, let's just tell you what the title of it. Divine means something that's directly from or related to Allah. So that by itself, within the face of its title, makes it superior to any other constitution in existence. You're so absolutely correct, and I so need on. everyone, and this is um, really interesting, because what you have, it's so simple when you look at it, see. So you have someone that gave you permission. Let's have a scenario right quick. I give, I'm, I'm a teacher, I'm in a classroom, okay? I'm an educator. I give my children, my babies permission to work on a project, okay? It's their project, I give them the permission. I'm buying all the supplies for them to work on that project, and here we go. So because I gave them that permission, the project, in fact, I created the project. You see what I'm saying? So we have a situation whereas, here's the analogy once again. We have the present Moroccan Empire has given permission to the foreigners, which is the United States of America, to operate over here as a corporate body. And the present Moroccan Empire was given, we were given permission, Cush and Ham, our forefathers were given permission from the great pharaohs of Egypt to come here. So you see what we have here is, we have the, Islam. We are the pharaohs. We are, we are the pharaohs, and we, we have the landlords here. We are here. the pharaohs. We, were the we are the here. landlords. We were the Absolutely. first here. So Kush are the, when you say Kush, you're talking about the pharaohs of Egypt. Islam. They are one and the same. And Ham is the father of Kush. So you're talking about the fathers of the ancient pharaohs of Egypt. So we are all talking about kings and queens and ancient rulers and monarchs and heads of state and empires and the like. So you had Egypt as the capital empire for the mean of Africa, and you have the present Moroccan empire. Within the document, which is a true and divine record, is two empires that are being referenced. Islam. So you Where cannot have the authority from, uh, you can't seek to have authority from someone who got recognition from us in the first place. Islam. So, so this is, this is uh, and I want you to expound on this, Sheik Jackson Bay, because here's the problem here. If I give you authority, then there's no way that you can come back around my back door and then tell me that I need to uh, follow your instructions. And I let you, you're the, the reason you're in my house is because I let you in. So can we give that an analogy? That's just, just like you coming in my house and I let you in, and then you basically stealing my key and then coming in on your own and telling me I owe you rent. So that's what we have here, but this is not the situation. We want to get into right now briefly the child blockers, the trial blockers, stay with me you all. I love you with a love that will never die. And this is the real time, this is the present. Welcome to the present Moroccan empire because that's all we have here. And science, since signs and symbols is for the conscious mind and our holy and divine prophet has instructed us to look from the south because this is where that destruction is gonna come from. If in fact, those who have place their foot on the necks of the divine people here in North America, the Moorish American anyway. Muslims. So, uh, uh, Sheik Jackson Bay, I did mention I wanted you to expound on uh, the, the, the uh, divine constitution the, and the, um, body politic. uh, yeah, the body politic and uh, divine constitution. Uh, expound on that a little bit, brother, because I do know that you have much to say on that matter. Well, Islam, Islam. well, as it relates to uh, the body politic, one thing that we have to take into account is uh, our trust, document 1010-5905. It's what effectuates our connection to the land, and it is, in fact, a trust that was established by Prophet Nobu Ali 
uh, a SESTI K trust, which deals with transference of ownership and or authority, because as we know, the so-called Negro, Black, and Colored was previously or prior uh, the, under the authority or rulership or the slaves of uh, various European families. So Allah had to send us our prophet to free us. And this is why the Grand Sheik has just made reference to Act 6. Uh, of course, we have already expressly addressed and read it, but Act 6, Act 6 is the master degree in which we hinge everything we do upon because it is incumbent upon us that all members must proclaim their nationality to effectuate that transference of ownership. Islam, Islam thank you very much, Brother Jackson Bay. Well spoken, well said. You have to realize that at some point in your life you have to get on your job because your occupation is one thing, your job is another. We all must be occupied. We have to eat, drink, live, work, pay for our children. Our babies got to go to school and college because we want them all to be educated. So we have to occupy ourselves with credits that will help us take care of these things, their education, their hospitalization, their diets, hopefully is vegan. So we it's have not. to make sure that we stay on track, everyone. And, and staying on track, uh, we have to uh, realize that what's before us now is something very sincere and we all need to take time to recognize. And right now, as I speak to you, we are it on trial. We're on trial how? We're on trial with the blockers of our earthly no, the salvation. Blockers are on trial. The blockers are on trial. We are, we are on trial. We have them on trial. We are in the court battling for that birthright. This is the battle for our earthly and divine birthright. Now listen up. And then with the blockers and having them face the truth, and that's using every possible form that we can Dillon and Chancery Court, and that court case, of course, is 17 CH 4526, and that the name of that uh, case is MST of A versus State of Illinois and Chancery Court. Now, will it take natural disasters? This is the question, like earthquakes and floods. Will, is it going to take natural disasters to rattle the status quo until we, we receive our justice? Is that what it's going to take? Because we know that the signs and symbols is for the conscious mind, and we can look at the world today and see September the 1st. What is going on from the horse's mouth? Nothing you've ever seen before in the days of your life. Nothing you can't imagine. Fear, pain, but what are we going to do about it? Because the law is clear. Islam is the law, and the law must live. And if this world is going to be put back on the map and be uplifted. It's going to be through the Muslims here in North America. And because of this holy and divine prophet and what he has brought, we welcome and we salute this man because Moors in court, this is the next thing we want to discuss, Moors in court as plaintiffs and defendants. Grand Sheik Loveville, can we expound on the Moors that are in court? Because it's been said we shouldn't go to court. But our holy and divine prophet made us know he informed us to go to those who know the law. Where are they located at? And ask them in an intelligent tone and you'll receive a favorable reply. So, Grand Sheik, should Moors be in court now? And moreover, should we be in court as plaintiffs? Islam, we should be in court because that's where we have to stand up to uh, the challenges at law. We find ourselves in court as defendants, but the problem is we have to have a better understanding and knowledge of self so that we can properly assert our status properly. Because see, within the, there are the orders of operations within dealing with law. You have jurisdiction, venue, status. No, you have status, jurisdiction, venue, and then finally subject matter. So when you go into court, it's always about status. Whether you are the plaintiff or the defendant, you have to be clear on the fact that status is always the first primary issue that has to be dealt with and well, has to well, be faced. Well, let me ask you this. Courts. How do the courts assume jurisdiction, seeing that Moore's Law Service is the service provider that's standing up for the present Moroccan Empire and for, uh, on behalf of our holy and divine prophet? Let's talk about how the courts you know, get that jurisdiction over the Moors, briefly if you can, Grant. Well, they get the jurisdiction due to our ignorance and latches and lack of standing up for our rights and the presumption that we are under the status 
uh, chattel property, 14th Amendment uh, citizens. So when you come under that chattel status property, uh, all capital letters, straw man, because even when you go into third grade English, they tell you to write your name in one, what, first letter capital letters and then the rest small capital letters. Why is it that they don't do that on your state ID or your driver's license when you know that's not perfect English? Okay, so we understand that they pull, they pull us up out of our birthright, and that's basically how they get jurisdiction, to make a long story short. And we're going to go into how the courts assume jurisdiction and how to file your case and make, that, make the record, because there's a way to do that, and also how to properly, properly defend your status via birthright in court. So I am Assistant Grand Sheikas, M.D. Lovell to the Grand Sheik, Lionel Lovell. I am honored and I salute the entire world because there's, there is one force that created us all. And that one force I give honors and great thanks to because we could be Texas today. I send love, I send peace, I send truth, I send freedom and justice to everyone that is out there who have been saved and to the, the ones who have lost loved ones, I am sending my heart to you. And I am saying, take heed, because only a great God could do such a disastrous thing. And we are not in a position to judge our God. I want to say I love you all with a love that will never die. Believe in yourselves. Please save our babies. If you don't do nothing else, I am asking all true American citizens to take a stand for justice and truth, because now is the time. This is the time we all prayed for, waited for. This is the age of Aquarius. And let the love shine, let the truth shine. I want to thank um, my team, ZZ, Zell, Voss, and also Sister Muhammad. I thank you all because Allah made it possible for us all to wake up and let us treasure now because all we have is the present, and you are in the present Moroccan empire. Welcome to everyone. Please enjoy this empire now, because we have now, and we don't have to go through what Texas is going through. Just know that. If you are a strong man and woman, please come and join the Moore Science Temple of America. We need strong men and women, and to educate your children, because the mother is the first teacher. And if you don't know how to eat to live, just read Genesis, okay, the Holy Bible, and it'll tell you the diet. Make your food your medicine, and please make your medicine your food, and whatever you do, begin to store your water and your food. Peace. Thank you. Chanel.